Hey guys, today I thought I would film a video for you all about my holy grail makeup. Shit that I just cannot live without. What I put on my face when I need to look the absolute best. So I have a way I sort of judge makeup and a way I sort of go through my products. And when I find something that's truly amazing, grab onto that shit tight and I do not let it go. And a way that I judge if a makeup product is amazing or not is do I travel with it? So I wanted to do a full face of makeup today talking to you guys about my ultimate favorite products, why they're my favorite if I bring them traveling with me, and if this is something that I do when I travel, I like wanna do my absolute full beat makeup. If I have an event to go to, or if I have somewhere that I need my makeup to hold up and be the absolute best it can be, these are the products that I reach for. These are what I travel with. These are my holy grail staples in makeup. Some of these you may have seen before. I've probably talked about a lot of these. I travel with these clear plastic things. I got them off of Amazon, but basically they're a little zip up. They have a little handle and you can see the makeup that you brought with you and typically I bring three of these traveling with me. That seems excessive, but I am a makeup artist, so it makes a lot of sense that I travel with a shit fuck ton of makeup. Here's another bag of stuff. I'm not gonna go through everything. As you can tell, this shit is well-worn, well-used, but you can see some of the products that I do bring with me traveling. I'm not gonna go through every single product. I'll have that be a separate video sometime of all the makeup I bring traveling with me. It's a lot, as you can tell, I fill three of these fuckers up because honestly, the worst case scenarios for me is I get somewhere and I don't have what I need. I'm screwed because I'm in a foreign place that I, I'm not gonna be able to just find this stuff and uh, that, that sounds so dramatic. <laughs> <laughs> Lately for foundation, what I have been using that I honestly can't get enough of, I think is such a beautiful foundation, I've talked about it multiple times here on my YouTube channel, is the CoverGirl Vitalist Healthy Elixir Foundation. This is truly so good. I've talked to my sister about this, I'm like, bitch, you have to get this. This is just such a beautiful foundation. It is one of those foundations that every time I wear it, my skin looks absolutely flawless. You may be able to tell, but right now my skin is just doing really well with combination of my diet and I'm not even doing skincare. The less I do to my face, the better. I remember growing up, I used to wash the absolute shit out of my face. I used to wash my face two to three, four times a day. I remember being so serious about my skincare and I tried proactive and I tried all these things because I used to have really, really bad um, acne on my forehead and in my chin. I remember even in school people thinking that I had chicken pox because I had such bad zits. I remember washing the shit out of my face and it's when I quit doing so much that my skin really cleared up. And as I've changed my diet and lost 35 pounds now, my skin has gotten exponentially better with each pound that I lose. But I still like a flawless base when I go to these events. So what I have been using is the CoverGirl Vitalist Healthy Elixir Foundation. Usually about three pumps of that. And this shade is a little too dark for me, but I like it because it, well, and it does oxidize quite a bit. But I like this especially because the finish is so beautiful. I did a standalone review on this, so if you guys want to see that, then I will link it up here. The only thing about that is, and I do believe at the end of that video I said that it was a good foundation, but that was a first impression as well. And sometimes, like I've said in the past, first impressions are not the absolute best way to tell if a product is good because sometimes the first time you try something you absolutely hate it and then you start to really love it which the more I use this the more I really really love this finish. Another thing that I have noticed and even Jordan notices this with me because we always get ready together when we go on these trips. Another thing that we've noticed is that the longer you spend on your foundation you know look up close to it really get in there look at your skin and spend a lot of time getting your skin perfect the better you can make your skin look the better your makeup is going to look skin I think for me personally is the most important part about makeup because if your skin looks really dry or if it's really oily or if your foundation looks cakey everything else looks cakey too but if you get your skin looking fresh and flawless everything else pretty much falls into place the only thing about this foundation is that because it does oxidize quite a bit, I do have to bring it all the way down my neck so that it doesn't have that line from face to neck. But honestly, that's a small price to pay because even just those three pumps that I used fully cover my face and neck because it's such a beautiful coverage and it's so, you don't need much. Honestly, this is such a less is more foundation. 
If I'm not wearing this foundation, then my other holy grail is the IT Cosmetics CC Cream. Holy shit, is that good. That's a little too dark for me right now. But if I ever want like the absolute most beautiful finish ever, either gonna be that or this. The IT Cosmetics is seriously so good. Oh my God. So now that my skin is really good, I've spent a lot of time, I've made sure that every area of my face is covered, that everything has the coverage that I like. I could use a little more coverage down here, but honestly, it's really not that big a deal. Now I'm gonna move on to concealer. And for concealer, I'm gonna use Tarte Shape Tape. Now, you see me holding two. Uh, that's because I actually mix mine. I purchased this when I was doing freelancing and I'm not really doing that much anymore. So I wanted to have a deeper shade that I could mix with lighter shades to create a custom color. So essentially, if you get the lighter shades and then you get a deeper one, you can sort of make every range in between as far as shades, just by using more or less of the deeper shade. Right now this is the color fair and it's way too light for me I tried exchanging it even in the unopened box to Ulta but the people at Ulta were frankly not not the best the gals at Ulta would not let me exchange colors because I'm looking for like light or light medium instead of the fair shade and the box was unopened I had a receipt the receipt said that it was the color fair neutral and I was trying to return the color fair so essentially they won't let me switch the color out because I don't have the correct receipt. I did purchase it, yada yada. Anyway, I don't blame the girls there because they are just doing their job, but it was quite annoying. I take a little bit of the fair and I put it on the back of my hand. Then I take a bit of the shade deep and I put it right next to it. And I just sort of custom mix my own medium shade. And you can see it really, it just makes it the perfect shade because I'm not trying to go too light in my under eyes. And there we go. And then I just take that and apply it to my under eyes. And Shape Tape is a really good, I know you've probably heard a lot about it online. Everybody talks about Shape Tape. It is a really good concealer because it's got really beautiful coverage. It is a little drying, but honestly, when I mix the two colors, I don't get nearly as much of a dry look. It's when I go in with too light of a shade that it looks really dry in my under eyes. And the Real Techniques Miracle Complexion Sponge is my everything. And then I just get really close to my mirror and really pack it on. And as you can see, that shade really looks nice. It looks like the right concealer shade for me. It's not too light where it's giving me that highlighted bright white cast that just looks so weird and fake. It gives just a nice lightly highlighted under eye. I also bring this up on my eyelid because I like to prime my eyelids with concealer before I do my eyeshadow. This is my Holy Grail powder. Cannot travel without this, cannot run out of this, can't replace this. I know it's expensive, but honestly, it is the one product that I have that I would pay high end for, and I don't know why it's so good. It just is so good, and it is the Laura Mercier Translucent Setting Powder. It just is so good. It makes everything look better. I have a fresh new guy right here. I'm just using up all the little last remnants of this guy. This is like $35 and I know how expensive that is for a freaking loose powder, which that's crazy. I mean, the ingredients of this are probably like talc, silica. For some reason, this is just so good. It highlights my under eyes in the most beautiful way. I just kind of shake it, get a bunch of it in the cap, and then I dip my beauty blender into it pack a bunch of it onto my sponge and then make sure there's no creases in your eye, under eye or eyelid. And I pack it on my under eyes. Now this is essentially baking, but I don't really wipe the powder away. So you'll see like I, I press it in and I get it all over. Make sure that it's really pressing into your skin. Make sure there's no creases and I set my eyelids as well. It just has the most beautiful finish. It highlights in a really beautiful way and it just melts into the skin. It, it just looks so good. I can't even explain it other than just saying it's so good. So I take and I really heavily set my eye area because I don't want that moving at all. I wanna make sure that my under eyes and everything stays perfect all day long. Then I take the translucent powder, dip into that, and then I go gently over the rest of my face. And I use it on this other than a brush because I just feel like it doesn't move around the other product. So I set my smile line areas. I set all along here where I'm gonna be putting my powder products. 
Maybe above my ears because them shits are getting shiny. You can see I'm not baking where I'm going to remove any of this. I'm just pressing it into the skin. You think it'd feel really heavy. It just makes my makeup stay really good. And then in the center of my face, I really pack it on as well. And then sort of blend out to the outer edges. I think what I really love about this powder too is that the foundation itself has an incredible dewy finish to it, but this doesn't make it look too matte. I can't even explain it. When your makeup starts to get oily, it just starts to gently seep through the powder and foundation into a really beautiful way. It doesn't make you look oily, it just makes you start to look fresh and dewy. And that almost seems like a waste of powder, but I use this powder all the time and it lasts me quite a long time. I haven't bought Laura Mercier in probably like five months or so, and this is still that same container. Yeah, I'm down to the freaking wire. Coffee is so good. I can't get enough coffee. I've gotten to the point now with coffee where I just drink black coffee now, but I've gotten to the point with it where if I'm feeling like slightly grumpy or if I'm feeling like I just need a little something to pick me up to just be put in an immediate good mood, just need to even smell it. Just need to smell coffee. I just need a coffee. That's all I need. Right now, I'm gonna move on to brows, then I would do eyes, and then I would finish the rest of my face. And the reason I do that for me personally is because the other products that I just put on are gonna melt into the skin. They're gonna become one with my skin. And then by the time I get to the other steps, everything is fully set, fully dry, and there's no risk of anything sticking or getting patchy. It's just the way I like to do it. So I know these products are relatively new to me. You know that these can't necessarily be my holy grail because they're so new to me but I know they are now because nothing else has touched my eyebrows since I got these products. And these are the benefit products that I've been using. And the two that I've been loving are the Precisely My Brow and the Gimme Brow. If you want a natural feathery brow that looks soft and beautiful and very realistic, then these are the products that you're gonna want. You could probably dupe this out with the NYX Micro Brow Pencil if you're looking for a drugstore version of these that doesn't break the bank, but these especially, I just love them. The color is so good and I'll show you. So essentially, this is what I've been doing lately. I've just been kind of starting right in the middle and gently doing little hair stroke motions. And when I get to the end, I just sort of extend my brow out a bit. And then the tail is always a little bit darker. That's just the way that I tend to do it. But I'm not fully filling my brows in anymore. I'm leaving them a lot more natural and I really like it a lot. Then I just sort of feather in this pencil and it uses such a minuscule amount of product, but you can see even just the tiny little bit that I just did, it just looks like a completely different eyebrow. I could leave it right there if I wanted to, but I do sort of take it into the front of the brow a little bit and then I start to draw little hair strokes up right here. That's pretty much the brow I like to do and sometimes I'll fill in the bottom a little bit more just so it's nice and defined, but I like a very natural brow right now. I just think it's really classy and it fits an everyday look. That is the brow that I want. Now it's not completely finished. I'm gonna use the Gimme Brow and that just brings this all to life. When in doubt, pinky out. Honestly, like if I'm trying to go real light, I just, I hold it like. Okay, so that's pretty much the brows. And then I'm gonna take the Benefit Gimme Brow. Up close, it looks like this. And it's just a tinted brow gel on a really small little brush and I like to run it through my brow hairs and it really just defines each individual hair. Pretty much it for the brow. You can see just the difference that it added, just a little bit more tint and you can see each individual hair just a little bit better. So now I'll move on to my eyes and the ultimate palette that I just can't get enough of. It's been my holy grail. It's been everything that I need it to be and more and the something that I can't part with. And if I need any palette to travel with me, any makeup brand that I have, any palette that I have so far, it's been this one. And this is the Morphe and Jaclyn Hill palette. I know you guys have seen me talk about this multiple times. I have a full review on this, so if you've not seen that and you wanna see my first impressions, review swatches, controversy, all that kind of stuff, you guys can watch that. I will link it right up here. Frankly, it just has everything I need in a palette to travel with. If I don't wanna do warm browns, it does have neutral colors in here. It does also have a plethora of warm browns. It has amazing shimmers. It has pops of color if I need them. 
which I never do because let's face it, when I travel, everything is bronze. It's just honestly become my staple palette. It's become the thing that I, I can get almost any look I want to out of this. Now, I think there are a few colors in here that could have been omitted to leave room for other more interesting colors. Like I think that these three are just so similar that there's even these four, like honestly, these two up here and then these two right here. I think you could have added just this one and this one and left out this guy and this guy added two cooler toned browns or two totally separate colors and it would have made the palette a little more versatile, but I mean, it's not really good. Another product I always bring with me when I'm traveling is the Viramona Color Switch. This thing is a little, it's so, it's so weird, but essentially it's like this weird mesh stuff, but essentially you rub your brush in this like this and it removes the color from your brush. So you don't have to wash your brush in between each color. It's called the Viramona Color Switch. Usually when I first start off with this palette, I start off with this color here, which is Silk Cream. I use that on my little Sigma E40 tapered blending brush. If you guys want a video all about my favorite brushes, how to use them, that video will be linked right here, also in the description box, if you guys wanna see that. I put that up a, hmm, a month or two ago, and I show you how to use each brush in the video, so you guys can see a tutorial at the same time as I'm talking about the brush. So I start off with that color. This is like my go-to look if I want something really striking and really beautiful for an event, this is what I go for. And one of my favorite colors in this entire palette with the worst name ever is Pukey right here. It is such a good shit brown color. It's really beautiful. It's kind of mustardy. It's like a deep mustard brown. And honestly, it just looks really good with bronzy eye looks. So just sort of windshield wiper motion that back in and out of the crease. Then I switch brushes over to the Smith 230. This is one of my new favorite blending brushes ever. It's just such a good tapered blending brush. Color switch it, because I used it on my last video and it's got some ABH shadows on it. We don't want those tainting our good makeup look now, do we, subculture? I dip back into that pukey shade and now I'm gonna go deeper into the crease. So you get that good gradation. Gradation, is that a fucking word? I don't know. And then if it doesn't look blended, I sort of dip into the transition-y shades and I just sort of, like for me, this area does not look blended. So I just sort of lightly dip and then just keep buffing. Then I tend to go in with these shades here on the bottom. So the one that I'm drawn to right now is to go in with this shade, which is the color Buns. And I'm gonna go a little deeper into that crease little further down. Sometimes if you feel like it's not blending enough, you can dip into your translucent powder and just kind of go over the edges and that can help sort of mesh it all in together. And usually I go on with this shade, which is the color Mocha. Now I'm just sort of going and mostly focusing this on the outer V. And usually this is where I stop for an event and then I go in with shimmer. I usually for this palette have been using this color which is Queen. I take my brush, which right now I'm using the Sigma Concealer brush and spraying my brush with Fix Plus. Oh, it smells so good. And then I dip into that shade. Sort of take it halfway. I love those half cut creases because they're so much easier. You don't have to go all the way to the outer corner. Sort of stop right here in the center and then by that time you have less product on the brush anyway and you can kind of tap off the excess. I know it seems kind of basic, but that's what I do for the eyes on the top. Then I just sort of take a mixture of those two deeper shades and I run them along the bottom lash line. One product I always bring with me and you can see is nearly gone is the Makeup Geek Full Spectrum Eyeliner Pencil in the color Obsidian. It's just a really good deep black, very jet black eyeliner. Sometimes I use the NYX Jumbo Eye Pencil in the color Dark Brown because if I really want like just brown on my eyes and not black, then I'm going with that. But today I'm going for like full beat, full glam. I line my upper and lower waterline. 
and you can see what a difference that makes. It does make the eyes look a little closed, but it's also sexy as fuck. And this is the point in my makeup where you can see I have a little bit of fallout on my cheeks, but I didn't brush away any of the powder, so there is still a fine layer of Laura Mercier underneath my eyes, and I just sort of brush away, make sure any fallout is gone, and you're good to go. I'm not particularly in love with any one mascara. Right now I'm gonna use the Too Faced Better Than Sex Mascara because it's what's in front of me, but a lot of times I use the L'Oreal Voluminous Carbon Black just really black and really good. Um, I'm putting lashes on so it doesn't really matter. Usually I put the lashes on first and then I put some mascara on. Right now I'm gonna do mascara first because I forgot to wait. So my ultimate favorite lashes, this used to have a bow on it but it fell off so. These are the Kim Tai Lionhearted Lashes. These are all I've been wearing recently. I kid you not, I don't know if I will ever love another pair of lashes. They are so big and beautiful. They make every eye look you do look 10 times better. They just are perfection. If you struggle with your eyeshadow, if you are having a hard time making your eyeshadow blend well, if your eyeliner looks kind of jacked up, throw on some lashes. The bigger, the better. They hide everything. So my favorite lashes are the Kim Tai and Cake Face Beauty Lionhearted Lashes. Glue wise, duo, lash adhesive in the dark tone. I've switched back and forth, back and forth, and honestly, I just keep coming back to this one. The one thing I can say about these lashes is even though they are absolutely gorgeous and perfect and the most beautiful lashes in the world, they have a very thick band because they're a very intense lash. They're the, the longest, wispiest, flutteriest, thickest, flirtiest, sexiest lash I've ever, ever seen. But the band is very thick because there are so many hairs coming out of it. it makes it very difficult to work with with in a way. I don't want that to deter you, but it takes a lot more practice. I would say these are not a beginner lash. So I put the glue on the lash and I let it get tacky. I'd say for about a solid minute, I let it sit there. And then I try my best to apply it. Yeah, not perfect at it, but you know, I'm doing my fucking best. I know they're intense, okay? But fucking hell, aren't they the most beautiful lashes I've ever seen in my life? Kim and Ty literally uh, absolutely killed it with these lashes. There's literally nothing prettier in the entire world. And if I ever came out with my own lashes, which hopefully one day will happen, every lash in the entire line will look like this. How weird is it that making the hairs on our eyes longer looks so much better. Like, what is that? What the fuck, that's so weird. So typically bronzer contour highlight products that I bring, I bring my Kat Von D shade and light palette. I bring my new Makeup Forever Artist face colors. And this is the little palette that I've made that I really like. These are some Tarte blushes and Makeup Geek blushes and colors that I would typically use. But I'm actually not gonna use any of these today. I'm gonna use just the Makeup Forever. So I'm gonna go in with these two shades here. And lately I've been just using my Smith Cosmetics 112 brush, sort of mixing these two shades together and bronzing up the face a bit. Pinky out. <laughs> I try to be really light with my application so that nothing looks too heavy. And I'm trying to do like realistically what I do for every time I get ready for an event or for anything where I need to look ultra put together. And I sort of run it up along my hairline. Very gentle. And then if I wanna take a little blush, this is sort of honestly like the best color blush for me. I can see if I can pop these out and look at the colors of them. The blush color in here is B302. Darker bronzer shade is S116. And the lighter bronzer shade is S112. But I use that same brush and go in with that blush shade, tap off the excess and just do a little bit on the back of my cheeks. I don't go too much and I don't bring it too far forward.
And now for highlighting. So lately, my favorite highlighter has actually been the Pretty Vulgar Cosmetics one that I tried in a first impressions video not that long ago. It's just so beautiful. I've actually taken this traveling with me twice since then. And so I go in with the Sigma High Cheekbone Highlighter Brush. I dip into a little bit of that, really gently go on the high points of my cheekbones with that. Such a pretty highlighter. God, it's so good. I sort of go in a little C-shape pattern. I also take it up here on my forehead, right above my brow bone, on the tip of my nose, and on the bridge right here, Cupid's bow. I highlight my chin, not everybody does, but I, I like it. And then if you want to go in with a different highlighter that's not so white, like this one's very white, I never travel or leave home without my Ofra and Nikki Tutorials Everglow highlight. And I'll take this, these two shades mixed usually, but I'll usually just go in with this gold shade and just gently kind of pat that over. If I want it to be a little less stark and bright and I want it to be just more of like a golden highlight. And it's seriously so blinding. Probably one of the best highlights I've ever used. And I'm totally about to hit pan on it. I never travel without this and I always wear it. And right now my favorite lip combo has been changing a little bit, but I really love for events to do MAC Whirl Lip Liner with the NYX Sandstorm color and then a little bit of gloss. Right now I've been going for a matte lip, so I'm gonna actually do what I've been doing and going in with the NYX Lip Liner in the shade Mauve. This is literally like a your lips but better color. Like this I would say is so close to my natural lip color. See? I overline my lips quite a bit, but if you go in with a lip liner that's very close to your natural lip color and you overline, it makes your lips look so naturally big. All right, so once I got my lip line down, then I take the shade Beige Babe from Maybelline. It's actually a really good color for me right now and I go over the top of that, which nudes it out quite a bit, but then it starts to look really good, I promise. And then I go in with, you guys know, my holy grail, most beautiful lipstick ever, Mochalicious by Wet n Wild, and I kind of run that over the center so I don't get butthole lips. All right, and this is the finished makeup look. This is my go-to holy grail products, what I use every time I wanna look as best as possible, how I do my makeup, how I do my lips, how I set my base. This is foolproof. This honestly lasts me hours. If I were to wear this right now, I would honestly be able to wear this for at least 12 hours and have it still look really, really good, maybe even longer. I did my makeup at 11 a.m. for the face awards and I didn't get home until 4 a.m. and my makeup still looked absolutely perfect. I didn't have to touch up my lipstick once because the layering of the products and just the way that everything works, it just works. The eyeshadow looked perfect. My eyelashes stayed on all night. Everything just looks good. My skin didn't get gross. It Because when you highlight it, it brings it back to skin life, but it's so set and matte and it's so held in place that it just doesn't go anywhere. It's literally like this is my foolproof, this shit ain't going nowhere makeup. Okay. If you guys want to pick up any of the stuff that I mentioned, everything will be listed in the description of this video. Links will be down there if you guys want to purchase anything. If possible, they will be affiliate links, which means if you guys click the link, I will get a percentage of the sale if you buy something. If you feel weird about that, go ahead and Google it. This video is not sponsored. If you guys are interested in this shirt too, by the way, I'm probably going to get some questions about it. It's from Fashion Nova. I will also link that in the description of this video if you guys want to pick it up. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys do like this video, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. I put out new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Also, Halloween's coming, so get prepared. 15 days all throughout the month of October. I will be doing every other day uploads of different Halloween looks, and there are some 
really cool things coming. So make sure you subscribe if you like Halloween. Also, you guys can follow me on all my other social media stuff. Everything is Raw Beauty Christy. I thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you at my next video. Bye. Hey guys, today I thought I would film, I was screaming. <clears throat> I usually travel with a clear, not usually, always. As you can tell right now, I have really, really clear skin. As you can tell, that makes me sound like such a fucking bitch. I didn't have the exact receipt for the color. I can feel a fucking cat hair on my face. I can feel it. I cannot see it, but I can feel it. Oh, there it is. Is that it? Maybe that was it. I don't know. I can feel this cat hair on my face. I feel it. Oh, can you see it? I got it! <laughs> God, I'm losing like 800 eyelashes. For some reason, there's just eyelashes all over my face. I've, I've like, literally, this is like the 18th eyelash I've pulled off. This is like my holy grail everything powder in this entire world. I can see hairs all over my face and I'm about to freak out. This is my holy grail I can see a hair right here. I can see it in my peripherals. It's really not that bad when you think about it, right? So you don't have to wash your brush, it wash your brush. If you want a natural, naturally. Mm. So usually for an eye look, when I start out, I usually start off with this shade here, which is the color, si how dare you drop on me like that? I can hear the ice cream man. And it's killing me cause I don't eat ice cream. Why is he playing yes, Jesus loves me though? Like the, you're an ice cream man. Go tell it on the mountain now. About to have an Aaron Brockovich moment where she runs outside and has to give the whole numbers spiel. Which number do you want? But one product that I always bring with me and that you guys can see, I'm like nearly gone. I'm nearly gone and I just line my, uh, line my lies, I line my eyes. For some reason, every time I like walk away from the camera and then walk back into frame, it makes me twice as orange. I, I like can literally see it right now. I can see that I'm like, Warm tone, why am I so warm? God, yuck. With eyeliner, if you struggle to make your eyeliner look, yeah. see I'm less orange now. I don't fucking understand, man. Mm. 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 Oh, there's a drip of coffee on my shirt, no. I didn't clear the memory card, did I? No, I wouldn't have done that, no. Which is actually a really good colorful me. Colorful me. If you guys wanna get any of the stuff that I listed, what? That was fucking rude, cutting me off, camera ass bitch.